And talking to Mary Farrell about her great community work here in Ballyfermot down the years and her earliest memories about Ballyfermot. Mary, that's uh, exactly earliest memories. Did you always live in this house? Um, well, this is my family home. Yeah. Um, I, my family moved in here, I think, when I was about three years of age. And when my parents were, uh, my mother was from Blue Bell, Comic Park, and my father was from Old Ballyfermot. I'm very proud of it. He was always, always claimed he was here before there was any houses ever built. So he grew up on Lifania Road, uh, the railway cottages opposite Sanford. Um, and in fact his family had two cottages, the family in both. He lived with his mother and his sisters, his family had one, and his aunt and his uncle lived in the one beside. And as the years went on, they were really market gardeners. They had, um, they grew vegetables, cabbage, potatoes, and they had, some of them had pigs in one of the gardens and they, as the years went on they sold some of their produce to the shops in Ballyferm as the houses mm. developed. So he was there as a young child, he went to school in Chapel Lizard and he always told me that he walked from the Fauna Road all the way down to Chapel Lizard mm. in his bare feet. Oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> so uh, whether that's true or not, no I don't I think know. Mother told me that. <laughs> but he left school when he was 13 and he went to work in CIE. And he's worked there all his life in CIE in the works in Inchicore mm -hmm. and the concrete bank. And his uh, brother uh, worked there as well. He was an inspector on the trains. And his father before him worked in CIE. So they had a great connection to CIE. Yeah. Um, and as it happened, my mother's family were also, her father um, worked in the uh, CIE works as well and her brothers. So there was that local connection. They lived quite close to each other. Mm. You know, the canal really separated the yeah, two yeah, houses. Yeah. Um, and they were very involved in, my father was involved in um, the Blue Bell Football Club and my mother's brothers were kind of founder members mm, sure. of the club, yeah. And they had some association with the Round Tower Club yeah, yeah, in yeah, Clendalk. Yeah. So when my mother and father got married, they got a flat, I call it, I won't say apartment. <laughs> in Chapel Lizard in Finlater's house. The house is still there, the two houses are still there, in, uh, just down from the village behind the big wall. Um, they're not in great repair now at the yeah. moment, but I have gone in to see them. They were up for sale um, yeah. years ago, so I've gone back to see the apartment. So they had a one, uh, one bed um, flat and they had three children. So they got this house and they moved in here, I think it was 1956. Mm -hmm. And the house has been in the family ever since. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we're. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. No, I was just going to say, and did you live with, in any other place apart from Ballyferm? Were you born in here? Uh, in yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. Right. This yeah. is where I li lived, or grew yeah. up. Yeah, um, went to school, um, started off in the Dominican, yeah. and was there until I made my Holy Communion. And then uh, St. Louise's school was built and we, my mother brought us up to Louise's because it was closer. Yeah. And the other reason being that Mary Queen of Angels opened as well and my two brothers could go to school there so she wanted us all going the same way to school. Yeah. Yeah. And they went up there to school. And I went there to primary school and secondary school, Kerry Tass College. And then after that um, I went to UCD. Um, I was in the very first class in Kerry Tass to do the Leaving Cert. It was nine of us, nine girls, and of that nine, three went to college, yeah. which was a great achievement. I think we have a photograph of that on the site, or we, uh, you know. You probably have yeah, of the, of the yeah, nine yeah, girls. I think we yeah, have, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and did you take part in any activities like such as sports and youth clubs? And well, you know, like there that? wasn't a lot of organised activity that I can remember as a child um, growing up. It was mainly school related. We did Irish dancing. Um, and we went up, I think it was to the Cala Green that was dancing there on a Saturday. We did dancing, Irish dancing in school. Um, as I was a teenager, we, I think I was in a basketball club. So we played basketball, but there was no sporting facilities at all in the school. 
um, never learned to swim, no swimming pool or anything like that. I mean, as children, we went on that road and that's where we had all the fun. Yeah. Play the game, set up for the best place. So <laughs> that's the streets and, and then you were near the California hills. And Absolutely, yeah, and yeah. we used to have great fun down there. Like we used to just go down and have roll around the hills, up and down the hills. Mm -hmm. And you know, at times the gypsies used to come around and settle and stay there, and they'd go around all the houses selling their wear. But when they got up and left, we'd all run down because they always left something behind, yeah, little yeah, bits yeah. of combs or jewelry, whatever. Mm -hmm. That they didn't want to take with me. I always found something after oh, <laughs> they left. Uh, but uh, they were very, I mean, I have great memories of being out on the street and great, like, the, we had great friends. Yeah. And in school, I'm just thinking we never had mobile phones, obviously. No, no. <laughs> but we used to finish school, go home, and then go and the girls would meet up, collect someone around the corner, then go to someone else up in Gertine, up to Cliggin, and we just wandered around, yeah, meeting yeah. each other and chatting. Mm -hmm. And do you keep in touch, by the way? With yes, the, yeah, yeah, some of them, yeah. It's a good reunion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now, the Gala Cinema was there at some point, I can't remember yeah. when, but oh, yeah. it wasn't somewhere we liked to go because mm -hmm. of all the messing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it's like it was that. probably one of them messages. <laughs> People throw sweets yeah. from the balcony yeah. down yeah. and tell yeah. us and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I suppose as we got older, we kind of were attracted more to tab, you know, for mm. the dances, the television yeah. club or oh, yeah. the iron, yeah. whatever, yeah. as we yeah. got yeah. older. That yeah. was it. Yeah. But um, that, that was it. And then how did you get yourself involved in so much community work? Well, um, I suppose by accident in a way, I always kind of think back to the Seven Days programme that was made by RT on Valley Farm. I can't remember the year, but I know I was in fifth year in Caritas at the time. And it really kind of had an impact on people. How their RTE come in and film what they did. And they gave a very negative portrayal of Valley Farm. And it was a Valley Farm that I didn't recognize. Yeah. Obviously, I knew there was issues or people, you know, antisocial behavior, yeah. whatever. But I also had a different experience. So we were in school chatting and the teacher said, everybody was kind of elated about it and we were debating whatever and then the teacher said, well I'm going to contact uh, some of the people um, at this stage, Paddy Wally and the Human Development, the Foundation for Human Development they were called, had moved into Paddy Firm and they were working with the old Tenants Association, John Sweeney, I know was involved with them, to kind of develop and expand the community association. And Ivor Brown now was involved at that point as well. So the teacher made contact anyway and invited Paddy Wally up to the classroom. And we all had our questions and our points to make. And um, his attitude was, well, what are you going to do about it? Why, why, why don't you do something about it? So he invited us to, they were based in Drumfin Park. You know where at five Drumfin Park? I think yeah. it's the St. Matthews Resource Centre now. Oh, I know it, I know it. They yeah. had just started there. And a few, few of us went down and uh, we just joined, he was setting up this Bally Farm Youth Group yeah. and we joined that and um, he was just, uh, again I think at the time they were developing the Bally Farm people just to draw new ideas but they were trying to get the street committees up and running, they were trying to, you know, extend the council and the community and he was kind of the person I suppose driving it. Yeah. So um, as a young person then we got involved in canvassing every street in Valley Farm. We had a big team of people and he knocked on every door asking people to come out to meetings and people did respond and at some point I think there was 36 street committees all around Valley Farm on the different roads and those people, I was on the street committee here, yeah. all our neighbours were on it and we'd meet up in the school or wherever we could get, or up, well, there was no community centre there now at this time, no, this was no. prior yeah, to, the, yeah, yeah. to the community association. So we'd go to the meetings and plan activities, um, like we had soccer teams on every road, we had, um, you know, they had competitions, uh, summer, what did they call, community weeks, yeah, yeah. and they'd have, um, people would, local people, we'd have, say, the Bonnie Baby or whatever, and then join the local. But the soccer and the sports is a big thing, the community games and all of that. So, um, and then the streets ran their own activities like social yeah. outings and all that. But from the streets you went to the area committee. So we had, Valley Fair was divided into five local areas and they had an area committee. And then they sent people to the council or executive. So it was a very democratic yeah. um, and it was a, had huge involvement of people. Yeah. And very exciting times. 
So at, early on, then Liam Shannon, I don't know, do you know Liam? Liam I know, Liam, yeah, Liam, yeah. And another guy called Shane Kelly, I think his name was, came in as community workers, and they were driving that community involvement. Um, so the community weeks, the street activities, and then obviously looking at Bally Farm as a community and what its needs were, yeah. and yeah. identifying, like, say, high unemployment, poor educational achievement of people, you know, yeah. all the, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. really yeah. big issues. What could we as a community do to tackle that? And then the environment and the facilities, like no swimming pool, no centre, yeah. all of that. Yeah. And through protest, organising, meetings, whatever, pressure, yeah. Yeah. took years, but all those well, yeah. facilities started to arrive, you know. Swimming pool was a big one, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, in, and and you were involved in that way in the campaign to get there. Yeah, there was yeah. a hunger strike outside yeah. City Hall, I think. Yeah. But my main involvement was really the Valley Farm people producing that, um, and I was I was got as far as the area commission. I never was on the council or yeah. the um, executive. Um, and when I had finished college, I was in the vocational school in Valley Farm doing the H dip, and I was approached by Art O'Brien who had set up the Ballyfermot Community Arts Workshop to uh, join the arts workshop and to work full-time for them developing that project because he had set it up. They were Art O'Brien, Roddy Day, do you Roddy Roddy Day. Day. Roddy and there was about two other teachers had set this up in the vocational school and they were trying to develop the whole idea of community arts mm -hmm. and working with young people in a different way other than the kind of straight-laced education system that yeah. they were struggling yeah. with, yeah. knowing that a lot of kids weren't achieving in school and they were very radical in their thinking, mm -hmm. but what could we do outside school that would, yeah. you know, involve people and children in their community and that they set up the arts workshop. Mm -hmm. So um, what they did was they had after-school activities and they did drama and they did art um, and then he at the same time they had an old folks, they set up the very first old folks group, I think it was nearly the first, in Clada Green. So they were working with different age groups and as the centre was built up there on the main road, you remember the old uh, centre, yeah, they, the yeah, they um, got the use of that. So this kind of, um, and they were linked in a way to the community association. So there was a relationship, let's say, between the community arts workshop and the community association. So I was working full time and we were based in the community centre and that's when I first met Jerry McCarthy. Sure. Jerry was in the school, um, in the vocational school, a pupil, and had got involved with the workshop through being in school and meeting and having art as a teacher. Yeah. And then Jerry, like straight away, his amazing energy, leadership skills sure. and creativity yeah. blossomed yeah. and he, he, they, he came to work with me in the arts workshop. So um, Jerry kind of concentrated on the activities for people, children and young people down the lower end. Yeah. And eventually there was a community centre built, do you remember that? Um, opposite Markfitch Park, a small one, little prefab. Um, oh, on I do remember, yeah. yes, I remember yeah. that one. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. That's yeah. A, yeah, it's still there, I think. It, no, 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 it was, it? Uh, no, it was only a prefab. corporation workers place then after? No, the, the other side. Oh, the, the other oh, side. Oh, the other yeah, side, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so yeah. that was, uh, was knocked down eventually, it was only a prefab. Like, the, at the same time, the first community centre was only, like, prefab buildings, really, yeah. so they were never there for to be last, yeah, you know, I'd yeah, say they yeah. had a limited lifespan. Yeah. So I met Jerry and then Jerry and I started working together and we were busy people, busy yeah. bees, doing all the activities that he's still doing. Uh, yeah. Maybe is it 40, 50 years later, 40 yeah, years yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So um has amazing energy yeah, as you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and then uh, through the arts workshop we had, we st I was still involved with the uh, Bally Farm people and then the Bally Farm television was a possibility at the time and again the arts workshop had a lead role in the production mm -hmm. of the programs and all that so i was the weekly producer and at the very early stages of Bally Farm television mm -hmm. um i oh, was 74 to 77 yeah, yeah, yeah that's right i'm yeah. not sure that the last three years now i'm not quite yeah, sure about i think I, I was reading up on the last yeah, slide and I just yeah, that yeah i'm not sure how long it lasted yeah. but we were based it was phoenix relays and the bca negotiated with mm -hmm. phoenix relays they were setting up the pipe television, bringing it to Bally Farm and made this offer to the community. Yeah. And it was a wonderful, wonderful project yeah, for yeah, the community. Yeah. Um, went out once a week for an hour. Yeah. So we had to gather up all the bits and pieces yeah. um, 
and get that weekly program together. But it was very popular yeah, and yeah. was watched by a lot of people. Um, we had and like the amount of talent that surfaced mm -hmm. that people came knocking, can I be on it this week? And then we had regular spots like and like stay doing the um, mm -hmm. the yeah. consumer you know, uh, the weekly shop mm -hmm. and comparing the prices in the yeah. different supermarkets. And we had a know your rights section for people at work. And they used to do the non-stop draw. This was the fundraising, how the BCA made their money. And people paid every week, and then they had to draw a prize. Yeah, yeah. That was done on air, and we had music. There was a man from Ballyferm Parade. Are you, are you from uh, Ballyferm? The Drive, just the after drive, the Drive, yeah. yeah. Or was he from The Drive? Willie Kane. Did you know Willie Kane? Kane, Kane. No. He was in the entertainment business. And I think he was linked, our manager, with Dickie Rock. He was very well so, connected yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah, very good yeah. entertainers. Yeah, yeah. And every week, Willie came up trumps with yeah, someone yeah. good, like Red Hurley came, Christy Moore, and um, Brendan Grace, and like once people heard who was arriving, yeah, and yeah. we were only upstairs over, um, I think it was her McLaughlin's butchers are now, yeah. so the space was very small yeah. and limited, and everything was limited about it, and that we had a set time. It went out live, so there was no pre-recording of anything, yeah, okay, and it was you know everything had to happen under pressure. Yeah. But it always worked. Yeah. I remember yeah. watching it yeah. myself on yeah. the street on the yeah. Saturday, yeah. Uh, you know, Saturday mornings or Saturday yeah. afternoon, yeah. as we had uh, we had only one station. Then when the pipe came in, it opened up. The whole yeah, thing, yeah, so yeah, yeah. You know. Ah, yeah. So yeah. it was a great. Um, it was a great way of communicating with people, yeah. as yeah. was the Valley Farm people. Now controversial in the sense of like power and control and whose yeah. views you're representing and all. There was always that kind of thing involved in it, but generally people responded to it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we had always the sports coverage, you know, for the local That's games, true. results yeah. from yeah. the matches, that was great. Yeah. And John Hammond from um, mm -hmm. Carner Road, he was the main presenter. And he was very talented and mm -hmm. very brilliant. Mm -hmm. and a clip of it on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when I put it on force, uh, Christy Doyle, who would we used to run yes, the ballot yeah. sessions down the Legion of Mary, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. and we'd get and as yeah. you said yourself, yeah. the talent in Valley Fair, yeah, and yeah. it's only coming now that I'm seeing it, you know, yeah. all the people that has uh, gone yeah, on to yeah, yeah. Uh, the talent. Yeah. And Christy was thrilled that mm. we had that clip in front yeah, of you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Now, yeah. I, I did mention to you before that Bernard McGovern, who was originally up there from Cleggan as well, did uh, a documentary on Valley Fair television for it, uh, he was doing a master's at Manute. And most of that is up on YouTube in mm. different sections. The whole, but the whole, it's a really, really good account yeah, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. Valley Farm Television. I know John Sweeney is interviewed on it. And Max Day, um, the people from Phoenix Relays that were involved and mm. all. So it's, it's I think a bit of links in my Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but it was, the whole thing is, was uploaded to YouTube. Yeah. So it's a good history without yeah, going into yeah, it yeah. all again. But it was a great way of kind of, I suppose, raising people's awareness about the issues in the community, whether it was to do with education, you know, whether we're talking about facilities, whether it was issues about um, health, you know, whatever the issues were, we always had the experts, yeah, or it was yeah. a great way of saying, there's a meeting about, come along, or whatever, you know, so it was a great way of mean, yeah, involving yeah. people yeah, yeah, in the community, yeah. it, was, it was fantastic. And you made friends that way. And Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah great friends. friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then through the body from people, Again, it was very primitive when it was set up first. I did the typing on my little manual typewriter. Mm -hmm. And we had Danny Gorman from Cligging and Dennis Kelleher from uh, Clada mm -hmm. Road. Mm -hmm. They were, um, art, they were um, draftsmen. And they did the layout with the letter set on the, you know, the layout yeah, yeah. and we got printed. We sold the paper. Um, mm -hmm. We had to sell it to cover the cost of it. So we had, nearly had a cellar on every road and they'd go round the road knocking on the houses. Mm -hmm. I think it was once a month we did it. Yeah. And um, the money would be collected to pay for the next edition. And again, like that lasted for a good few years. Yeah. Um, and it was again another way of kind of rallying the community around whether it was like when they were proposing to put a motorway through Valley Farm, people joined uh, the protest, same with the prison was a lot of people had it. Mm -hmm. did not want that prison built in Clover Hill at the yeah, time, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was another kind of thing land on Valley Farm. Uh, you know, even the idea of crowding the area with more housing and whatever the key issues were. Yeah, yeah. It was a great way of rallying people around. You mentioned, you mentioned there uh, Dennis Keller and a few of them uh, involved 
uh, funny Dennis uh, just being on the Facebook so you'd see this uh, it's great that uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're mentioned in, yeah well, Dennis you know, and because, Danny were uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. there for years yeah. uh, but there, there was also you got involved then and down the corner yes yeah yeah and uh, how did you get involved in that and yeah. you had an acting in that <laughs> yeah acting in that yeah by one and only yeah yeah <laughs> role in the film how did you get uh, involved in that then well that was the the project was a project of the um, arts workshop right so the project came about again like it was the influence of Arthur Breen and Roddy Day. Roddy Day was a teacher up in Queen of Angels and Art was involved in the vocation school so they had contact with a lot of young people that they knew but anyway as I said they were very radical in their thinking about education and Roddy was involved in curriculum development and they were up in Queen of Angels looking at the kinds of books that were being given to kids to read and trying to encourage kids and engage kids in reading and the material that was available was so many miles away from the experiences of young people and you know if you're trying to engage kids in reading they read much quicker if they're reading about something they're familiar with yeah, yeah. you know about whatever so anyway uh, Roddy got the idea of writing a, a book a, a story for children yeah. and he involved Noel McFarlane who was from the end of Ballyfermot on Ballyfermot Road is yeah, still yeah. down there. No, he was a, ended up he was a journalist with the Irish Times, and no wrote a story about down the corner, which was basically yeah. around a group of boys uh, and their kind of little insights in that their home life, their interaction as boys in school, and then the whole kind of plot was about robbing the orchard and what happened when they robbed. It was a very simple story, yeah, yeah. but a huge success, yeah. and like that book was taken really in schools all over Dublin and used as a way of engaging yeah. um, children in reading. That was the thinking behind it. Um, and then uh, Art um, secured funding to turn it into a film. Yeah. And I think it was supported by the Irish Film Board and the, the British Film Board as well. Yeah, fun, yeah, funding. Yeah. And Art obviously been uh, involved in the arts and the wider um, arts community had contacts and got a film crew uh, and you know professional film crew to um, make the film and like I mean it was a really really great experience because it, the whole idea was that it would all be people from Valley Farm yeah. involved yeah. in the film acting and um, providing the sets for the film yeah. like it was filmed in Mrs. Kelleher, Dennis's mother, one scene is in her kitchen there was another woman, um, Monica Murray from Gertine um, and she was in, acted in the film absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. and her, I think her home was used. Marion McCarthy was very involved in the organising. Um, yeah, she was yeah, like yeah. Um, the PA, I'd say, I can't remember how she described her role, but yeah. forgive me Marion if I can't <laughs> well, how you described yourself. Um, but she was uh, very involved in the we film. We talked to Marion as well. Asked Marion yeah, yeah. about the film. Yeah, yeah, Marion yeah. knows that Marion has great memory and she yeah. remember all the details. But um, so the film was made, uh, Joe Comerford, uh, another great filmmaker, Irish filmmaker, was involved in, in directing the film and Art uh, yeah. produced the film really and um, it took a good while to yeah. get, but they actually just chose lads from the school and um, these fellas had never acted before or, or been involved in drama in any way and they worked with them through improvisation, you know, mm -hmm. set the scene and the lads had some script to work with and then oftentimes when the lads would just be interacting with each other they filmed and mm -hmm. cut a lot of kind of natural interactions in a way that mm -hmm. weren't scripted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course Liam Meldon had a big yeah. role in the film as well, very good. Yeah. Um, and we were also in a house up on Armour Road, the Joyce's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the lads now in it were brilliant and the way they just kind of naturally yeah. Yeah. But I was an extra really. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So you're acting for you. Yeah, yeah. So you're acting for you. So I was an actor. So um, we were down, you know, after they robbed the orchard and one of the lads injured his foot, and he had we had to go, go. He had to go home. And actually, there was a man, another man from Landon Road, Grassic, who acted the father in the film, and uh, he has to go down to obviously Stevens's hospital. And sure, we were in Stevens's hospital at six o'clock in the morning before there was any. The hospital got busy filming, like so. Again, it had to be over and done with very fast. 
So I was one of the nurses yeah, and yeah. my friend Catherine Bow. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't feature very long. Oh. <laughs> For all the time we were down in Stevens's hospital, we weren't um, I, we didn't feature in the film very well. I was talking to Mrs. Cronin off Valley Femme Road. Yes, her son was there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's in Australia. Yes, And yeah. I know he was delighted to see that clipping yeah. again, you know, yeah. but we have a copy of some yeah. of the clipping, you yeah, know, yeah, on the yeah. site. And it's great to look yeah. back on all them. You yeah, know, well, now we are hoping that Joe Comerford, the last time, do you remember we had the yeah. event for Raddy, the yeah. passing of Raddy Day to Marcus yeah. passing? And Joe has a project in line where he's supposedly trying to get the film onto DVD. So that would make it more widely available. Oh, okay. Just little yeah. snippets of it up on YouTube, but not the whole yeah. film. So they, we had the grand uh, premiere of the film in just the Curzon Cinema so in Abbey Street. Oh, you had it there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, again, buses from Valley Farm, all the families that were involved in to see yeah. the film. Um, I suppose there was a mixed response to it. There was a lot of adverse um, controversy of publicity about it before it ever was shown um, and really and truly it was not necessary yeah. but there was certainly a rumour circulated that the whole film was shown by the firm in a bad light and um, and it should be stopped and all the rest you know but I think anyone that has seen the film would see that was I think you got the blunt of that too didn't you? Oh absolutely yeah, yes, yeah, 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 the yeah. attacks that's over true. the film yeah, and what yeah. we were showing and all the yeah, rest yeah. but it was abs it was just belly farm and kids yeah. as they were well as um, i saw the film myself and yeah the same orchard we did yeah you know what i mean yeah. like, i i was talking to a, uh, he was a, a assistant police commissioner he was only a rookie here at the time yeah and he was telling me his biggest uh, thing out here in Bally Farm, with all the news that we got, the bad news we got, yeah. well, all he was doing was chasing kids over to California Hills that was robbing the archers, you know? Yeah, that yeah. was his, uh, that's you that's know... That's was daily activity. Yeah, that, you know, yeah, that's yeah. what he was saying. Okay, really? he had other bits But it was also like a, a kind of a, a social history in another way, in that it was depicting people interacting with each other yeah. as people, a culture that exists, yeah. that deserves yeah. to be recorded um, and we had a great woman again she was from Ramley's Road, Essie was her name she played the grandmother and we were in a house on the ranch in it but she was some character yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant she like, was a real grandmother great yeah. people are married and were, were yeah. recorded yeah, in yeah, the film yeah, like yeah, so yeah. Um, it was definitely to me it's a social history yeah, yeah. and it was life in a way yeah. as people were living it yeah. and experiencing it yeah. and the, the controversial side of it uh, yeah, it, it just wasn't justified. No, 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 no. As I say, it was a very good film. I saw myself as a, and a, at the premiere there at the yeah. Civic. Yeah, that was yeah. brilliant, and it brought back lots of memories to me. Yeah, about when we'd be chased up the yeah. hill, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, apples, yeah. You know? yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. And what about what would you think in your lifetime here? Would you think was the best thing you saw come to Valley Fair? Or, you don't know about well, to me, I, I, I should mention it really because I was very involved in it as well, was the BCA, the Community Association, had a number of subcommittees and say they had a subcommittee that looked at employment opportunities for people um, and they were looking at the whole thing of education in Bally Farmers. And there, was, there were great for commissioning research and surveys to see what is happening and what can be done. Now, this was way ahead of like a long time before partnerships and all the things that emerged yeah. later to deal with community issues. But the, there was an education subcommittee and I was part of that with Tommy Phelan and yeah. Pam O'Reilly and there was a nun from Caritas, I just trying to get her name, it escapes me, and David Conley, yeah. who were on the committee together. And we had lots of discussions, um, and Joe Carroll, do you remember Joe Carroll? Joe Carroll, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Joe was, yeah, but they were a great yeah. bunch yeah. of people yeah. and yeah. very like, uh, tuned into what was yeah. happening in yeah. terms of education yeah. and I suppose Tommy Phelan was brilliant for articulating how irrelevant education can be for so many people. So many people are going to school not engaging and are yeah. not getting the basic skills. Like literacy was a huge issue and I'm sure probably not as big an issue now in schools in Valley Farm yeah. as it was then but the idea of people leaving school without being able to read and write yeah. or leaving school too young yeah. And then you'd have to ask the question, well, why are people not staying in school? Or why are so many people? And what's happening to boys as opposed to girls yeah. and all yeah. that? Um, and even though we had great schools, with there's still a lot of issues yeah. around um, the numbers of people leaving early. Yeah. You know, people at primary school not going on to 
um, secondary school. Yeah. Now over the years all those issues have been addressed and there's been, I would think, lots of improvements in those areas. But these were the things we were concerned about. Yeah. And Tommy always had this idea about education being relevant for work, giving young people skills that make them employable. And Pam as well, like they were very practical in their approach to education. And um, I suppose one of the things we thought about was that there wasn't enough vocational opportunities for girls in particular in Valley Farm, mm -hmm. like we had two secondary schools, but we didn't have any really vocational education. Like we had the boys had the Valley Farm vocational schools, so they had apprenticeships and mm -hmm. all of that, but we didn't have that in, for girls. So uh, one of the activities we took on was we went to Leicester to look at what we call, at the time, were called polytechnics. They weren't, they were third level education, but it was more uh, wide ranging and embracing than mm -hmm. what we had in the schools in Valley Farm. Mm -hmm. So we wanted new programs, um, new subjects, and new structures of management. Mm -hmm. And that led to the thinking that we needed a new senior college. So that was the group of people, without a doubt, that spearheaded mm -hmm. the yeah, thinking yeah. of that Valley Farm oh, senior yeah. college. Yeah and um, put a lot of work into um, producing reports to meet with the minister and all the different mm -hmm. relevant people to get that school for Valley yeah. Farm. And it was achieved. Yeah. And like that, that school had a very unique management structure um, when it opened first. And I remember Tommy represented the union, no, the community, I think, on it, and there was representatives from the trade unions on it, which for a board of management, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. in terms of structure, that was the first time yeah. that ever happened. Now, there was a lot of controversy about where that school was going to be built and um, like people didn't want it in the glass alley or no, people wanted it in the glass alley but I think the intention was to put it down where the tech, the second, you know where that, the um, art college is now, yes, somewhere yes, in there there was right, a cipher. Yeah, yeah. but the thinking was we wanted it in the middle of the community, accessible to people and that it wasn't just a 9 to 5 school but it was open to the community that there'd be courses for women at night time, you know, real adult education. Yeah. Um, and I think in, initially it did yeah. achieve that, still um, playing an important role, yeah. but I'm not so sure how many people from Valley Farms yeah. ended up in it. Do you know what I mean? I know, like I mean, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a fantastic facility, and then we got the library beside it, and the the recording, the oh, yeah, recording yeah, studio and all that. So, like it was, it, it was the far, like the how far ahead Tommy mm -hmm. and Pam could see. This was an empty derelict site that was the bane of everybody's life. The glass alley, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. antisocial behaviour. You know yourself what was yeah. going on, and to get a school built there was a big battle. Well, I keep on saying to Pam to write the book. Oh, I and, think and she, she knows that, you know, <laughs> she knows that. She told me she started, yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm relying on Tom to Yeah, write that's right, I told her to write the book, yeah. and I was talking to Tommy Phelan, the Lord of Mercy and Tommy, before yeah. he died, uh, and he was telling me about this, about yeah. the school, you know, Yeah. and he told me that there was a lot of controversy because the the clergy, I think, was, was afraid of outside coming into Ballyfermot, what they were going to bring into Ballyfermot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what he said to me. But what amazed me about Tommy, and I know the family won't mind me saying this, yeah. because he told me this, he couldn't read or write when he left school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it amazed me about a lot of people in Ballyfermot, because yeah. a lot of them left school very early, yeah. but yet they could come out to Ballyfermot yeah. and organise. Yeah. And Incredible. Organize everything. Yeah. Everything's on a win-win situation. Yeah, yeah, you know, right? absolutely. And the other thing about them was they were fearless and dogged yeah, right. in the sense that mm -hmm. if they saw, if thought something was worth pursuing, mm -hmm. like the, the, the need for a new school, like the need to kind of look at, well, what is being taught in our yeah. school, or ask the question. Tommy was really keen on asking the question, yeah. why are people leaving school and they cannot read or write? Yeah, yeah. And like, that was a big challenge. If you're a teacher or a principal of a school, you don't want someone who you think is just the local Joe so coming in and asking you big questions. Mm -hmm, yeah. But Tommy was fearless and, and Pam, and they challenged everybody and anybody, yeah. uh, right up to the minister. I can't remember who the ministers were, and I should have prepared yeah, a bit better. I, I think right. I have a lot with them, yeah. uh, because Tommy, yeah, Tommy did. But they were brilliant. I mean, I attended yeah. a lot of those meetings with them. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> they you know, were absolutely dogged and well-informed, yeah. yeah. and knew exactly yeah. what they were, yeah. what yeah. they yeah. wanted yeah. for Bally Firm. But to me, over the years, it was the efforts of the likes of John Sweeney, um, Pam, mm, yeah. Tommy, oh, there's so many people, Monica Murray, um, 
there was there, there was three women, Mrs. Kelleher, um, Eva Waters, and Vera Ronan were very involved with me in the arts mm -hmm. workshop, and they ran the um, the old folks group. So like there was great. Um, Connection. What year would that old folks group have been set up? Well, that was uh, 75. Mm. 75. We used to run on the, in the Legion of Mary for yeah. years, you know, yeah. down there. You know, yeah, we yeah, to, yeah, yeah. And we had a minibus. We got yeah. the arts workshop had a minibus. So that minibus used to go around and collect the people. Um, mm. It was definitely up to Clad of Green. Yeah, and yeah. They, the people up there cooked meals like this is before now the HSC came on board yeah, and, and course, started yeah, course, providing. Yeah. Like a lot of things yeah. that happened at that time. In my view, they they were like really what the people of Valley Farm had thought up as solutions to real yeah, yeah, problems. Yeah. And then, as the years went on, that was seen as a good solution. And then the government might come on board and start funding, yeah. as they did youth work. Yeah. Like when we started that arts workshop, there was no funding no, no. for youth work. Um, there was no funding really for community development. Mm -hmm. um, it was the um, the, no, the Foundation for Human Development and again Ira Brown and his involvement that was controversial but good came out of all of that know, do you know what yeah, I mean yeah, like yeah. some people who are used to having power and in authority for a long time don't like to think that someone else can do do something about a problem or I know what you, you know, mean. Yeah, come yeah, at it a different yeah. way so it's always that yeah. but they were like they were very far reaching in their yeah. views of how the community could change or what Bally Farmer needed um, and certainly to me uh, over the years there's been huge successes um, and you know when you see the 70 years and all the oh, yeah, talent yeah, now yeah, that, yeah. that yeah. people can come up with books and poetry books um, yes and, yes you know with really, yeah. the young people making films yeah, yeah. Um, there's so much goes on I know in 2003 uh, when Orban arrived in here with 11 and a half million to spend yes I was they were going to go they were going to go for uh, 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 advice outside interest. What do you call? Uh, uh, I can't think of the name, but it would have cost money. Yeah. But then, advice. There was people here could do things. Yeah. People could write books. People yeah. could run uh, yeah. like yourself and yeah. Yeah. Uh, run different things. Yeah. You know? So yeah. they spent lots of the money here in Bally Yeah. 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 I yeah. thought that was brilliant. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, always, of course, I mean that, and that, to me, was the big thing about, say, the people who got work initially all local body farm people yeah, yeah, emerged and yeah, kind of grew yeah, up through the yeah, whole thing yeah, you know yeah. and then I, you've got people like jerry still yeah. involved oh, yeah, and yeah, another yeah, generation yeah, of young yeah, women yeah, brought through yeah. all of that yeah, yeah. community activity i want to thank mary uh, for sitting down with us That's and uh, remembering all the local history it's great to have it out there and remembering all the names of the people that done body farm so proud and thanks to sean as well for recording the information Thanks. Thanks, Ken.